Okay, so we're on day two of Mishle 14.9. Evilim um, Yalit Asham Uvein Yishayim Ratzon. So we had a bunch of translations for this. Uh, okay, Asham is either guilt or guilt offering. Uh, Yalit is either to interpret slash translate, to mock or deride, like, oh, sorry, sorry, let me go back. Yalit is either interpret or translate, like, ki hab melit ben osam, um, or it means to mock and deride, like, lates, or it is, uh, uh, Yalit is to embellish, like, melitza, like a poetic uh, saying. Um, and uh, and it could also mean to intercede, to act as a, a go-between. So we said either guilt interprets or translates fools, which is very weird, and among the upright is favor, or guilt mocks or derides fools, or guilt embellishes fools, or guilt offering, a guilt offering intercedes on behalf of fools. All right, fine. So our questions were, um, what is the scenario here? Uh, if there is anyone, what's the subject? Uh, according to the first three translations, in what way are asham and raton opposite? Right, usually think of, um, I don't know, usually think of like, Chait and Raton, or like, you know, uh, Sina and Raton, uh, Asham and Raton are weird. Three, what is the definition of Evil in this context, and how is Yasha the opposite? Um, four, what is the relationship between Evilim and the Asham and the Yasharim and the Raton? How do they relate, each pair relate to the uh, to the thing it's paired with? According to four, how are, are, are the Evilim bringing the Asham? Like, or is it saying, like, they should bring it, or like, is it related to them in some other way? Six, according to one through three, how is the ashram acting exactly? What is it doing? Seven, uh, why are both the avilim and the yisharim plural? Um, we usually, we note that if it had said singular, that would have been normal. Um, or even singular and plural, because a lot of Mishle like does one good and one bad singular and plural, but both of them plural just seems a little uh, weird. Um, okay, and then according to translation one, uh, if this is like a translation, uh, like Yalit's translation, what is the nature of this Targum? Who is it for? Nine, what is implied by the Bain Yesharim Raton? Uh, and there's no Bain in the first half. Ten, what is the Raton in this context? Whose Raton is it? Hashem is another person's. Eleven, what is the Havamun for both halves? Stylistic question, why reverse the object and subject in the first half? Why not say Asham Yalit's Avilim? Thirteen, what is the practical application? Benefits, consequences, and fourteen, who, who's the intended audience? So we had a highly developed approach and then two other partial approaches that just got snuck in at the end, right? Um, so the highly developed approach, sorry, was um, that it's talking about the group dynamics among Evilim and among Yasharim. So the Yasharim, like the Ram says in his definition of friendship, uh, each one wants to be Mamale, Raton, Javero. So there's going to be a striving to fulfill each other's Raton, and that's going to be the unifying quality between them. The Evilim um, have relationships, but the relationships are based on instant gratification. And so it might look like they're trying to appease their friend, but what they're really trying to do is to restore their own ability to get selfish instant gratification from their friend. And that can't last because they're fundamentally going to be at odds because at the end of the day, if I just want instant gratification from you and it's a choice between doing what's good for you and doing what's good for me, it's going to be, you know, what's good for me. And the only way that they could get mutual gratification is to be a tzaddik and to do what's best for the whole system, but that is not in the immediate. So they're incapable of doing anything that would actually like unify them in a, in a real way. Uh, and so it's just going to look like they are, um, uh, they're trying to like, uh, you know, uh, you know, re repair their relationship, but they're really not. Um, okay, then Isaac had emphasized when he was doing this, the communication um, that that the Evilim interact with each other in the framework of like uh, wrongdoing uh, in some way we, should, we didn't really elaborate on. And uh, and then Sean was saying how um, uh, Sean, oh, hey, yeah, yeah. Um, Sean was putting this in terms of um, uh, another thing that unified them together. And he initially said that it's the guilt that unifies them. And I didn't really see that. Okay. Um, so I'm not going to go over the translations again, because this is such a complicated translation puzzle that we'll have to do it according to each of the Mepharshim. Okay. So anyone have any other? Oh, sorry. And then we had, uh, at the end, David said that this is about how the two subjects um, relate to doing something wrong, either reacting based on guilt or finding some way to improve and enlist the other Yisharim to help. And Ezra Fader apply this to um, uh, the guilt that the Evil feels when he goes off the uh, the derach, that he's going to basically uh, engage in mocking and derision. Uh, yeah, I don't have any more, sorry. Um, Let's take one. I have a physical. 
Oh yeah, there's, there's a physical one. Yeah. No, I, I look at this anyway, so I don't think it. Is that is that not one right there? Oh, uh, that's not one. Yeah. Uh, what page is it? Uh, uh, all right um uh, anyway um right yeah isaac what do you want to say i'll put the translation on here um yeah i just wanted to talk about the communication thing that i was yeah um, yeah i think um um there's a whole way of um interacting with with people you know not basically i think the whole way of, of inter of it's a human interaction that if you almost like can't even see the, of interacting not not based on well i you know like is this person you know like like they do things not because they're required to but because they want to do something nice for for someone you know uh -huh, right like, because, like is that the whole framework of doing something just because you want to do something for them is is like like, like that's that's not a, a dynamic that they have um mm -hmm. Wait, that's a good that's uh, explanation yeah. i i still feel i i think with that explanation and then with uh sean's initial explanation i think the thing that i still am caught up with is like we think of Evelium as immediate pleasure seekers and I'm just confused by the emphasis on, on guilt in the Pasuk. I think that's going to be the thing that is going to make or break whether I like a, a certain interpretation or not. Yeah, Ezra? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead, Isaac. Okay, I, th I think I have an answer for that, which is yeah. that, that they're, they're, op like, they're making decisions based on whether if I do like this harm to, to this person, mm -hmm. am I going to be like, guilty or not you know like like there's um like a um I think a popular subreddit called aita which is am i the a-hole um mm -hmm. which is just about you know conflicts that you know, people have and the the thing that the thing that people are are concerned with is am i the person who's like actively doing something wrong even right. if it's even if the, like they get you know but like a lot of the times it's someone it's something where the person could go you know above what's like you know like technically correct right and then make the whole situation better you know right um so i i still have i i think that that is true i still have a problem with it though because i think if an avil were to ask like am i being a jerk that would be a level like and i don't even think he asked that you know um, and, and I think the only, so that's why like, I'm not opposed to the idea, but I think that we need to narrow the subject in order for it to make sense. So that's why I liked the approach that we said yesterday, that the framework is what, what keeps these two people together. So you could say that guilt, you know, that there's some phenomenon of guilt that keeps them together, but like, in terms of like the standard, like, like if the puzzle is talking about just the way that they operate, I don't see why he's emphasizing guilt. Um, so okay. I, that's, I think the, if I had to put into words, what, what I didn't find, uh, uh, satisfying. Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, Ezra and Ariel. Yeah. Okay, so I have a, a new translation. Okay. It does not make sense. Okay, that's fine. Everyone to overlook it. Yeah. Um, but it's that Avilim make people feel guilt. Okay. Um, so it would be like guilty. Uh, sorry. Um, <laughs> foolish people make yeah make others make, make others feel, feel guilty. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's it. Um, and then yeah, I mean, the, the rest is, is okay. Is yeah. Insane. Um, and if you could pause the recording for a second, I have an anecdote. Okay. <laughs> Spicy. Okay, hold on. Uh, um, uh, so, right. So let's just see if um, if, the, if we could work out a full idea here. So fools make people feel guilty. See, okay, I'll, I'll tell you another underlying question. And this question was bolstered by something that we're about to read, okay, <laughs> which is in the Radak. But um, this behavior, see, I don't associate this behavior. I mean, it can come from Evelium. Like, hmm. actually, no, I, I take it back. Yeah, what were you going to say, Ariel? I, I have a question on her that I okay, have sure. a different yeah. approach. Yeah. Uh, different angle, but uh, is, is it true that people who, is it always when you make someone feel guilty that they're fools? No. So what do you, is that? No, you're saying that, that fools will, like, they'll distort whatever the case is to make it seem as if 
uh, the other person should be guilty. Right. Okay. Right, yeah. See, I, 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 I'll say what I was going to say. I still am bothered by the fact that to me, this doesn't seem characteristic of a, of an Avil specifically. And then Yashar, like, you know, that's another thing that we have to realize that this is the opposite. Right. Yeah, so that's, yeah. So with, with that, I guess um, it's kind of similar to Sean and Isaac's approach. Where, yeah. Like, if you have like a community of Yasharim, no one's going to ever feel guilty. They're just going to feel like they're. Right. You know, okay. Some... Yeah. I, I hear, I hear the approach. Yeah. The other thing also grammatically, by the way, which again, maybe this is why no one interprets it that way is that the uh, Yalit is Yalit, singular. Yeah. 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 But, but uh, yeah, again, I, I, uh, I, I, I acknowledge that like, maybe you can read it that way. I don't have any more uh, sheets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Ariel, what do you, you want yeah, to say? I, yeah, I, I, I have a different uh, take on on. on okay, approach. so before you do, are you responding to what Ezra's saying, or do you have a different take also? Uh, I sort of. I'm trying to understand what he's saying, and also what he said before on Ezra's thing. Okay. Uh, but I can. Uh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Ariel. All right. So I, I want to. Oh, we're uh, Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Go just ahead. To, just to elaborate what Ezra's saying. I think. Yeah. Um. If you leave notification, Ariel. <laughs> yeah, a villain don't have any sort of like self accountability. So yeah. if there's blame to be had, then they'll push it onto other people. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. Okay, so that that is characteristic of villain. Okay, again, uh, grammatically, uh, whatever. But uh, right, so they will, they will. Um, there's got to be a word for this. Uh, is there a word? Like, is, uh, not making others feel guilty, but like they will. Um, deflect their guilt. Yeah, deflect the guilt onto others, maybe. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There's, I think there's a specific word that I'm looking at. Right. And uvin yashayim ratzon. So, what would be the opposite of that that idea? So, just let's just talk it out for a second. So, evilim don't take any responsibility for their actions because they're not thinking of decision making in terms of real cause and effect. Uh, they're just thinking in terms of do I get something good out of this or or, or not. So, when hmm. when something happens that is bad, even if they caused it, they're not going to have the uh, the self-reflection to say, am I the cause of this? And they'll just put the blame on others. So the, what would be the polar opposite of that in the, in the Yasharim? Yeah. I, I think they both. I feel like this is a, this is a very big example, yeah. but like, I feel like a, like a tzaddik or someone who's very you know, lofty level, he's going to find ways to focus on the positive in you uh, and to like improve, help find ways to improve like your, whatever, whatever, whatever you are. So like, I can ask like a, I can give an idea to like a rabbi and even if the idea that I gave isn't entirely so great, oftentimes like, oh, so what you're saying is, and he'll, he'll really make it a stronger thing. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> okay, right. So that, I, I, that is, that's interesting. So in other words, yeah, okay. okay. I'm still bothered by this. Uh, it's not, it's not, not a, um, not a knockout thing, but I feel like if this puzzle said like, you know, Sadiqim and, uh, I don't know, but I'll, I'll say it anyway. I'll yeah. say what you're saying anyway. <laughs> that uh, the Evil is totally throwing off any responsibility um, from himself and then will just blame others. Yasharim are doing the opposite, which is asking themselves, how can I help to improve the situation? Right. And even if, so if it's, if, if the cause of it is it in them, then certainly then they're going to like, you know, uh, examine themselves and like well, take steps to change. But even if it's in others, they will help, you know, rehabilitate right. uh, others and, and that's a favorable interaction. Okay, right. Isaac? I think when when, when there's a problem yeah. like, you know, with like, let's say two, two, between two, two Yasharim, um, the first guy's going to say, I'm sorry, it was my fault. Another guy's going to say, no, it was my fault. And then they <laughs> you know, like, right. kind of like they end up like divvying up the blame and then and they both feel good towards each other right you know, about yeah. about the whole interaction yeah that's good uh, i think ariel is literally going to explode if i don't call on him now so i'm sorry david yes ariel <laughs> no no ariel i'm gonna call you right now because i can't stand you reacting every time i look somewhere else yeah yeah <laughs> okay so um so i'm gonna focus on the guilt like a 10 okay. like a 10th grade girl who like <laughs> takes it personally oh when the teacher God. doesn't call like on her seventh grade girl yeah no, yeah, yeah i have anxiety that we're just not gonna finish so i, I have to and what do you think i have yeah go ahead <laughs> Uh, okay, so, so I think I think uh, guilt is just a translation. I think that's how that, that how that, that's how the plastic is. Guilt is just a translation. It's a, it's a translation, meaning like we're using guilt to differentiate between a fool and someone else. Meaning like it says guilt interprets fools. Meaning, yeah. What does it mean? I, I'm reading it to mean that like you know I, I think like when people are are guilty of something or 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 they act a certain way like 
you can differentiate between this guy and someone else. Like, like again, I don't know the whole archetype of a fool and how he would act or behave after a certain action that he does or whatever. I, I don't really know, but maybe someone who's who has some knowledge and being able to differentiate between them, then you know may, maybe uh, they can see they can see the guilt within him and he can recognize that he's like a fool in a specific area or whatever. I'm I'm, I'm maybe I'm confused at how you're using the word translates. First oh, of all, are you so are guilt, you guilt? Tra- okay, like like an unclus, you know, yeah. like an unclus. We yeah. use unclus to you know tra- you know right. under, uh, have a deeper meaning of yeah. like the Torah. Yeah. So 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 to over here, guilt like the uh, the uh, guilt. I don't know how else to say. Is is a translation on an individual? Like we can translate an individual from them expressing guilt, meaning we can recognize his way to understand them. Not not necessarily understanding them as an individual, but like they can recognize where he's like foolish in a specific area. Anyone else get what I'm saying? I'm just reading, I'm just reading the puzzle. Are you trying to say like reveals? Like right. Someone yeah, else said that. Like, yeah. Um. I that think. That was my idea. But... Yeah. I think. Um. Who said that? <clears throat> was it Sadigon? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no, it was. It's an idea. I didn't think that far ahead. I'm just trying. I'm just just. Yeah, Sadigon is the one who says, um, Upirush uh, Yalit Yatargim will translate Clomer Yaspir the Yigale Mahusam. It will explain and reveal their essence. Oh, okay. This is my. Yeah. Opinion. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's okay. Sadigon. Okay. Let's go. All right. So let's go. And I want to learn some of the parts from today. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of like that, but I think it might be a little switched in some way. Okay. Um, that's also depending on the question I have and how we're using the verb, like on which, the, which one's the subject. Of this. Yeah. So I'm not sure if it's. Guilt is doing the the interpreting or the revealing, or if it's the uh the Asham who's doing it. But I'm going to go. Asham is guilt. Sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah. Or if it's the Avilon. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. Um, but I'm going to go with the fact that the way I'm going to interpret it is, um, when a Avil does something, um, it becomes apparent that he is doing the thing that he's doing. Due to some underlying guilt, so I guess like like the reason that like a person is going after some like pleasure that's probably down like a downfall to them, it's really because there's some inadequacy or so there's a lack in some other area where they're not they're they're not perfected in, and instead of dealing with that problem, they're looking for some sort of outlet, mm-hmm. and so this is where the mistake is coming from, um, and so and you can see this when you when, when when you look at that person, you can see ah. If only he had dealt with this other like issue in his life where he could strengthen himself, then he wouldn't be doing this pleasure seeking in the mm-hmm. first place. On the other hand, uh, so now, just to make sure I understand this first half. So you're saying Evelium, yeah. when they act, that's going to point to a certain underlying guilt, yeah. in the sense of an imperfection, oh, in that, yeah, exactly. right, inadequacy. Right, yeah, okay, exactly. fine, okay, I got that. And yeah. then, um, and then the opposite, you would say for someone who is uh, a Yashar, yeah, is how oh, I see how he is doing this. This action is is coming from this perfection, and like, oh, it's even if in a situation like like you said, like yeah. there's a a mistake he made. Even yeah. in a mistake, mm-hmm. he doesn't double down and make a further mistake. You know, instead, he immediately has the ability to address that mistake and, and fix it. Okay, so that sounds like a good idea. Um, let's just sharpen it a little bit. Um, so let me just get down what you're saying first. Okay, so uh, yeah, it took me a minute to figure out how to like formulate it. Okay, but... so um. So when uh, when if when you know Evelium um, act, uh, then one should you know like decipher their actions in terms of the underlying uh, guilt uh, guilt or imperfection uh, which caused it. It's caused it. Okay, fine. Caused it. Um, one can, I should say, one can decipher, the, right? In other words, like you can diagnose, right. diagnose might be better, diagnose, right? So um, uh, when Yasharim act, uh, one can assume that, that uh, like, I guess for good or for bad, right? For, uh, for good or for bad, uh, one can assume that this is, that this stems from an underlying um, like desire to align themselves with, I'm going to go ahead and say with, with divine favor. Okay. Because uh, I think that's yeah. going to be in terms of like perfection. Right. All right. So this is like a, a definitely like 
this has potential. Okay, I, I think it still needs to be developed more. But in the interest of time, I'm going to go into David, and I want to go to some of Parshim here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, just a small thing on why Yishavim are on the opposite half of Asham. Yeah. And I think Yishavim definitely are looking for what is true. They're yeah. upright. They're straight. Like they're looking for what is true. Right. And I think Asham and bring, especially if you're going to take the fools, and make others feel guilty. Yeah. Just any bring about guilt is, I think, like not true. It's specifically an emotion. It's not. Like truly, you did something wrong. I think guilt is like a feeling that gets attached to not that which is not straight and upright. And I think that's just why you shall never went through the opposite half of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, um, okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm I I think I understand each half, but I'm not understanding the whole idea. So Yasharim are people who are this is like Rabbi Yonah's definition of Yashar, which is that you're um you're meet you're you're drawn in behavior and in your mind to that which is uh like uh, rational and righteous, right? Okay, yeah. so there's a certain like underlying drive towards that. And with uh, say the avil part again, it was it's not a fallen idea. It was just saying that the sharim are going to be on the opposite of our shem because they're going for that avilim. I would think I mean, if they're by their nature, if they're looking for something that's like about themselves and going to be helping themselves, it's not like that's ultimately true. And then maybe they're they'll make other people feel bad to mm -hmm. reflect or. Been yeah, I wish I could express the thing that is making me not satisfied about all these ideas. I'm going to try it one more time, okay? Which is that I feel like a lot of the ideas that have been suggested today and yesterday are like bending over backwards to try to take the Yalit Asham and then plug it into the Avil, you know? Uh, and what would what the kind of idea I'm looking for is like, oh, yeah, Avilim totally do that. Like, this is what I would say about Avilim, you know? So like, and it might be because I'm not understanding like where your, your your intuitions are coming from, but like that's that's my problem. And again, I do think it is it, it, it's even in in like again like if we take this as Evelyn mock, I say that's a late, so that's not an Evio, you know. And it's not invalidating the ideas, but just as an interpretation, it doesn't sit well. The Sadigan, I think, kind of that's how I was trying to use what Sadigan to answer your question because like it's not like a quality within the avil it's almost like an outcome yeah that occurs from yeah the I, yeah yeah definitely i think i think that that, you know, that works and, yeah and the usher he has a totally different outcome which was which which can be perceived in oh he's a usher they're right both, yeah because look at his look at the positive yeah yeah outcome. right right so the, yeah. and so, so and that, that is much better and then the question would be why are we focusing on avil and yasharim specifically yeah ezra um, does that bother you when it comes to uh, no, Malvin's understanding is so radically different that Evil, according to him, is the direct opposite of the Yashar. And that's why I'm curious to see the Malvin to see it to uh, uh, develop your idea. Okay, so let's do two things. I want to look at the Radak, who's not in the packet, and I want to look at the uh, the uh, the Malvin, which I have not thought about yet. Okay, so the Radak, and by the way, I, I, I don't think I, I formally like announced my gratitude for uh, the fact that we have the Radak back now. Okay, so when we were going through the Mishle, Redox commentary, I guess it, we we don't have it past chapter 21. So it's been months in this year uh, since we've, or maybe more than months, that we've had the Redox. And I'm just very, very glad that we have the Redox back because now we're back to chapter 14. Uh, he's so good. Okay, so Evilim Yalit Asham. Kol Echad Mehem Yalit Asham Vehova. Okay, now uh, let's just focus on understanding his idea, then we'll see if it, if it bothers me. Okay, so each and every one of them Yalit Asham. So that uh, does what that accomplishes what you wanted to accomplish, which is uh, it explains how you can get the singular from the plural, right? That each and every one of them does this. It's a little bit of a, of a move. Every, of you? Of you, yeah, yeah. But it, it allows you to grammatically make sense of a yeah. plural doing a singular action. Okay. So each one of them is Yalit Asham Vachova. So what does that mean? Kihu Mechapes Mume Hanashim Vashmosam. They they search out the blemishes of people and their guilt, venosin behem dothi, and they uh, they um, ascribe uh, imperfections to them. Okay, velo yadabru laolam b'shevach bnei adam uvedavar tov shenim sabehem. They never speak in the praise of people or about a good thing that is found in them. Kmo, okay, this is a good marshal. Kmo hazvuv shlo yanuch el b'makom hazuham avahalikla. Just like flies only land on filthy places. Okay, that's how the avil uh, operates. Of Amruzal, and then he quotes the uh, the projection Chazal. Kol haposel b'mu haposel. Anyone who invalidates others is really invalidating himself, or really he's 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 pointing out his own blemishes. Okay. Three point, was it three point of actually? Yeah, right, something like that. Yeah, one of those like 
Yeah. It's more eloquent when you yeah, don't yeah. say it yeah. than when you like, but yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Uve, okay. So, so that's what he's saying the Avil does. Now, again, my question on this is this seems like what Lates does, not an Avil. So we have to understand that. Okay. Then he says, Uvin Yisharim Ratzon, Derech HaYisharim Lachasos Pishay Bnei Adam. This is kind of similar to what Isaac was saying. Um, in uh, He says, the way of the Yisharim is to conceal uh, people's faults, um, 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 and their blemishes. And to praise people for the good that is found in them. Uh, and it says in, uh, I don't know which work of Musar, he's saying, there was a Chacham who was walking on the way. Amar uh, Ha'ish, uh, uh, one uh, another guy, I guess, said, How like, like rotten is that carcass? Okay, I guess they saw a carcass there. Amar HaKacham, and the Chacham said, Kama Levanim Shineha, how white are its teeth? <laughs> okay, so he praised the good quality of it. And that just reminded me of a um, of a, a passage from Marcus Aurelius, which, by the way, I, I know I, I say this from time to time. I don't know why I don't use this. I want to get into the habit of using this, the note-taking feature, okay, on Al Torah. So this is another reason. There's no cost to having a personal account. Just have an account on, on Al Torah, and you could add personal notes. Um, I don't know why I don't use this, like, all the time. So Marcus Aurelius in Meditations 3.2 says, um, one should also take careful note of, of things, such as the fact that even the byproducts of natural phenomena have a certain charm and attractiveness. For example, in the process of baking bread, the loaf breaks open in some places. And although these cracks, in a sense, represent a failure in the baker's art, they do somehow catch the eye and, in their own way, stimulate the desire to eat the bread. Or again, when figs are fully ripe and they split open, and in the case of ripe olives, the very fact that they are on the verge of rotting gives the fruit a special kind of beauty. The same goes for ears of wheat bowing down to the ground, a lion's wrinkled brow, a boar foaming at the mouth, and many other things. They are hardly lovely if viewed in isolation, but they embrace the appeal of the natural phenomena of which they are concomitants, and so we find them attractive. In now, he, the theatrical sense, I suppose, like they're, they're like they're not beautiful from like the like oh how pleasant. Yeah, but they're like, wow. There's like some sting. There's some activity happening here, and that's, that's like, interesting. I mean, I think I, I, it's hard. To, he does well, seem the to be. Well, of the mouth is the one specifically. Uh huh. That, that, that's interesting. I mean, yeah. I I don't. I, to me, it does seem to be. He's pointing to like the uh, either the aesthetic appeal or the utility or something like that. But it could be a broad range. So he's talking about the natural world. But I I, I what I want to do now is it's like very poetic. Though, so. Yeah, yeah. He, he's a good guy. Um. <laughs> yeah. So um. Uh. So what I want to do now is look at that. Uh look at the full picture of this Radak here. Okay, so just to summarize, he's saying, Evilim yalit asham. So he would say, Evilim um, uh, assign blame. That'd probably be the best way to say it, right? Uh, or they, they, mm -hmm. um, they uh, more than assign, they, they look for faults. Uh -huh. Say again? Project yeah, project blame would be the way that he's understanding it, correct? Yeah, so they, they project blame. Um, so they never speak well of people and they always look for the bad. I love they highlight the bad, and that really stems from uh, their own their own flaws. Okay, and Yesharim praise people and look for the good. And then it's funny he gives that example, and I don't know why he's giving the example. I don't know if he's using the example to show that they they do this in other areas that have nothing to do with humanity. What was the example? Again? The example is they saw a rotting carcass, and one guy oh, said, "Oh, it's so disgusting," good. and then and then the Chacham oh. said, "Its teeth are so white." So I don't know if he's using it to show that this is how they view the world. Or if that's just a muscle for like how they relate to human beings, like like the um, the uh, the Yisharim uh, see the good and the uh, Evilim see the bad. You know, they focus on the bad. So what's the idea according to the Radak here? What's the guilt? The guilt. He's saying guilt is uh, is like you're saying is like fault or like Chizkiah was saying is like faults or imperfections. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. It's, it's revealing. So what's the unifying idea here? Because I feel I feel like this is about how the Avil looks at the world. The subject matter is how the Avil looks at people and how the the Yisharim look at people. But yeah. the question is like, why do they do that, or why do we care? Yeah, I and also and also, what, how is this a quality of the Avil and the Yashar specifically? Yeah, I guess this is like this, the lesson behind it is yeah. to show you that you go towards that which you look at. So if you are tending to focus on things that are negative, uh, then that's that's what you're going to start emulating. Mm -hmm. um, and so Chacham probably even knows this. I think he's more conscious of this. And so uh, he chooses, even in the face of some negative thing, to not be taken in by the negative thing and then therefore by emulate it, but rather find the positive. Not because he's lying to himself about like the nature of the world right. and ignoring that. It's not like he doesn't know, but he's saying, okay, but I don't want to relate to that. You know? Yeah, so let me just um, uh, add something to that as well, um, which is that 
Um, I, how do we square this with what we were saying about Yashar, which is that the Yashar is going to look for his own imperfections in order to improve them. You know, clearly, I mean, and, and I know you're not saying uh, contrary, but in other words, it's not like he's, uh, you just remind me when you say he's not like blind to this quality. Right. So, so what does he get for focusing on the good? And I think you're also raising an interesting question, which is that um, when it's talking about the Evil, is it like saying... What, how do you say what he's attracted to do is going to make him more like that or something? Yeah, he, he's going to become like the thing that he that he focuses. He's fixing on, so he's yeah. fixing on imperfections, and he's going to become more imperfect. Right. So I, I'm, what I'm wondering is, it seems to me that the Radak is saying the opposite, saying that the fact that he focuses on uh, on the negative stems from that's how he's coping with his own imperfections, or that's stemming from his own imperfections. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, I'm saying that's a secondary. I think it's going to yeah. be a kind of thing. Right, so, vicious cycle type thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah so right. That's true also but that itself came from the fact that initially he yeah like this and it doesn't have to be he's looking at it because he could be in an interest kind of way looking at it like for some reason he's drawn to seeing the negative things yeah. and there's people who like really take pleasure in seeing and, and calling out oh that's such a hideous you know like yeah. people who gossip or people yeah. who do this kind of stuff um uh but as far as the uh oh this is the question of does the person pay attention to the negative to the, does the yasha yasha see the, the bad in him and fix it I would say it's similar to like, like my students will make this, I'll go through a problem on the board and then they'll all start yelling out, oh, it's because I thought this and I made this mistake here. And I'm like, okay, we don't, we don't need to start exploring all the Nate, the wrong ways that we did it. Mm -hmm. You got the wrong answer. That's enough that you know that focus on the right way to do this now. Right. That's, that's the, so where the correct. That, that's why I want to explore a little bit more because I do think both parts are necessary for perfection. Yeah, Ezra. Yeah. So I think that, uh, premise is that everyone has imperfections. Yeah. Um, and you can either use that to, to your advantage or you can like kind of disregard it and try to pretend that you don't have any imperfections. Yeah. Uh, so the Yashar is going to recognize that he has imperfections and he's going to say, what's the, like, why are my imperfections any better than these imperfections? Let me focus on the good. So that way, uh, um, like everyone will see the good in me. So uh -huh. um, that's what I want to explore also is what, why are the Yasharim doing this? Right. Cause he, uh, yeah. he doesn't say, so, so yeah. I mean, if you're going according to the Rabbi Yonah's. Yeah. Uh, uh, the Yashar, oh yeah. 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 Earlier, yeah. Which is, um, that like they see the truth yeah is that like obviously there's the truth that there's an imperfection here and there's also a non like there's a there's a some a good quality here there's yeah a good quality and a bad quality right um and that's like the truth of it so obviously like you can focus on uh the bad quality and like even though there is a bad quality um there is also other qualities here so, right whereas the whereas the avil will only focus on like the bad qualities of something yeah um uh, the only part of it. And, and that kind of like blinds, like that kind of puts like, um, covers over any good quality of it. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, uh, I, just play, the I just want to play the devil's advocate here. Cause yeah. I think last week we said that, uh, I forgot who said this, one of the Mufarshim in our last Pasuk said, oh no, no, it was, um, yeah, I forgot if it was on eight or if it was on seven that, uh, that you can, oh, is there even, even Kaspi, hold on, let me find him. Uh, even Kaspi said <laughs> on um yeah he said um uh he named Mavur so go far away from the foolish man he named Mavur ki haaram yelech nilchokos bedato divredas omi peace far so from omi peace far in vim enzos ito so let's say people will learn from chachamim or from their books but if he doesn't have access to that uh, uh, he says you should look at the ways of the ksil and just do the opposite right um, uh, they asked the chacham uh, how did you get Musar? I saw a fool and I did the opposite huh. right so and then he, he quoted the uh, plus of 24 which is uh, Shlomo passing by you know the house of a person the thing was all broken down so my, my point is so devil's advocate is it seems like a chacham uh, also looks at the faults of people, but he does it in order to gain, uh, you know, to, to gain perfection. So the question is, what in what framework is the yashar focusing only on the good of other people and not on their bad, given the fact that he could learn from their bad? You know, like what makes focus on the good any more like in line with reality than focusing on the bad? I think he is. I mean, it's not like he's ignoring the fact that the guy just points out the carcass. Like he notices the carcass. It's right. It's like a glaringly obvious thing. Um, but I think finding also, like, obvious, when he says, like, oh, what did you see today? So like, his wife asked him what he saw. Yeah. He's not going to say, I saw shining white teeth. He's going to say he saw a carcass. Right. And it had, with shining. had really nice yeah. teeth. Right. right. Yeah. 
um, where you're focusing on both, not right. you're commenting on, on one of them. Okay, so, so if this has to do with speech, then I can see, okay, I, I can see that that would be a road to answering this question. In other words, that what the guy thinks about, of course, the Yasha is going to think about all things that he could gain perfection from, but in terms of what he speaks about, then I think that would be a good, uh, a good focus here. Yeah, Moshe, did you want to say something? No, I, mean, I was going to add to basically what you said. Yeah. In practice, where it's, it's not, you know, he's going to notice um, good and bad, but the avila doesn't, either just doesn't completely block it from his mind. Yeah. There is a good there. Um, whereas the Asharim, he might notice that there's bad, but he'll instead try to focus on the good when interacting with other people. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. I, well, I, I think I just, that triggered an insight that I think is aligned with what you're saying, I think answers this question, which is that, um, I do think that when it comes to to uh, like whatever you choose to pay attention to, then you're gonna you're gonna see the world through that framework, right? Um, so, and I think that's definitely true for speech. Like if, if that's the thing that everyone's that that you are constantly talking about, if you're constantly talking about people's imperfections, that's what you're gonna focus on. So, so to answer my question about what makes focusing on the good any more reality than focusing on the bad, if you're in a veal and like Isaac said, you deflect any sense of responsibility or self-examination, then talking about people's bad qualities and imperfections will just further that. Right. Because anything that you have that's imperfection, you will like distract yourself from by pointing out the blemishes in others. Hypocritically. Right. Whereas the Yashar doesn't have that problem. When he talks about other people's fault, he's not doing it as a way of deflecting right. uh, self-examination. Right. He, he's doing it as a way to learn from that. So I think that's consistent yeah. with the Yashar. And to the contrary, I mean, not to the contrary, but but in addition, seeking out positive qualities in other people will allow him to be in a way, like in a positive way as well. Like, you know, so in other words, I, I think that if we focus, if we assume that the puzzle is about speech and what they talk about, and then we pair that with, so in other words, the subject of the puzzle is, 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 I guess, how the, the, uh, the, how the social commentaries of Evilim and Yasharim further their character, right. right? So the Evilim have social commentaries of pointing out other people's faults, which allows them to deflect their own self-examination. And, uh, and it's even worse than deflecting it. Well, like I said, that's what we mean by deflecting is that they just will, will only look at other people's faults and that'll like take away their energy from like looking at themselves. And the Yasharim, certainly they will learn from Xilim and, and, and people who have faults, but they will speak highly of people and find the good in them to, to be able to learn from that as well. I think that's a unifying idea. Yeah, Ezra? This bothers me though, why is it feels? I know, it seems like a late thing. It does seem like a late thing. I, I, I can't answer that. Yeah, Ariel? Yeah, I was, I was just thinking that, um, you know, I, I think there are like a couple of things, you know, I, everything you said, I think kind of the two things that fall under the category. One of them is, I wonder if like the difference between a veal and a lace is like a lace is worse, right? Yeah. And I feel like maybe it's just like it's just like a mindset type of thing. Meaning like he's so he's in a mindset of like viewing the world in a very like I guess negative outlet, but that doesn't you know maybe maybe it's not like as in depth as a lace. Yeah, got it. Like, yeah, go ahead. Does no, that answer the question? No, I'm not. No, I I I got an idea. I I couldn't hear you because of the idea. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just yeah. Just um. Uh, I, I want to get this while it's on the, on the hook. Um, so um, to answer your question, what's the definition of an avil? So Rabbi Moskowitz's definition of an avil is someone who looks at everything superficially. Okay. So I think that it's true that the late also mocks people and points out their faults, but the avil, because he operates on a superficial plane, doesn't look deep into himself and doesn't look deep into others. And the combination of both those things does cause him to just focus on on other people's like faults. And I do think this needs further exp uh, exploration because the, the late is gonna go out of his way. Like that's his activity. He goes out of his way to put people down to, to boost his own ego. I think the avil is stemming from something else. And th this is, this is hmm. okay, th this needs further thought because this is saying, okay, late are not the only people who engage in late sanos. This is saying that the avil also engages in late sanos. But the question is, what's the difference in the nature of why they do that? Okay, I think that's that requires further thought. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's kind of what I was. Yeah. Okay. Um, getting at, yeah. Okay. Good. Because so there's some of the different players. Like one is, yeah. you know. Yeah, I, I do want to think about that more, but I also want to get to the Malbin because uh, uh, that's going to. Can I ask a quick question? No, not now. Um, uh, we'll, we'll we'll do it if we have time at the end. Um, so to reiterate the definitions here, the Malbin in the last pasuk said that the um, the 
difference between Ksil and Yaviel, both of them will deny received principles of Chachma, okay, like what we call like the Masora or Chukim or whatever, things that you can't prove with your intellect. Um, but the Yaviel does it, uh, his opposition is ideological, that like he, he denies or doubts these principles um, for intellectual reasons. The Ksil really just wants to live life in Taiva and to rationalize it, then he says, oh, like these things don't make sense. Okay, so that's the premise that we're walking in with. So what does he say now? He says, um, it, so a melit, an interpreter, is someone who stands between two people to reveal the thoughts of one to the other. Uh, to reveal the thoughts to the other person who doesn't understand his language and his internal thoughts. Uh, like Yosef. Bishiuro, the meaning of the Pasuk is Bene Vilim Yalit Ashram, Bene Sharim Yalit Ratz, and Ratz Lomar, Hagam Sheha Evilim Him, Hamis Tapkim, Umachishim Huke Hachma, Umisnagim La Behaflet. So he says, uh, uh, in addition to the fact, or aside from the fact that the Evilim are the ones who doubt and deny the principles of Hachma and oppose it definitively, parentheses, Lo Kixilim Shosim Zeb, Bimirma Lahapik Taivasam, not like the Kixilim who do this self-deceptively in order to just satisfy their taivas. The Yasharim are the opposite of the Yavilim. Shalibam, their minds, the Yashar's mind, Yashar Bedarche Habina Umasigim Hamas are straight in the ways of Bina and they apprehend the truth. Bedarche Hachma Betuchim Umubutsarim Baliban. The the ways of Chachma are secure and fortified in their minds. Yukar Tuch Tuchyus Machvosehem the Sisri Libosam. The inner thought, their inner thoughts um, and uh, the, the hidden things in their heart are are manifest. They're they're recognizable. Kihayevilim benafshan. The evilim are guilty in their souls. Geder ha'ashem hu hamakir shu chayav onish amasav. The definition of ashem is someone who recognizes that he's liable for a punishment for his actions. Shehalev. Oh, this is longer than I thought. Okay. Shehalev hamargish yargish amasav imtovim ra. I don't know what he means by that. The heart senses about its own actions whether they're good or bad. Halavai, that were true. Vali- was that like a conscious ego? Yeah, I don't know if he's talking about super ego. Yeah, that's what I would assume he's talking about, but I just don't know that the super ego is accurate, you know. Right. But uh, yeah, I, I, I was thinking the other possibility is that there is a certain, um, like, uh, common sense, uh, like, um, thing that there are, let's say, like, in the realm of Bin Anmachavero or like Mishpatim, you know that like stealing is wrong. From a like, in, you know, not not a super ego sense. I mean, you also have a super ego sense, but like every society has laws against stealing. Every society has laws against murder. So maybe he's limiting it to that. We'll see what he says. Valev ha'ivil yargishu ha'ivonesh. The heart of the evil knows senses that he's liable for punishment. V'nafsho ha'pnimis mara almasav, and his inner soul is um, bitter about his actions. Kind of reminds me of that Rambam with the, uh, you know, uh, break his uh, his fingers with the get, like you know that. That deep down, you know, you you uh, the, the there's part of you that does know, you know, the Selman Kim does know what is right and what's wrong. I don't I don't know. Subconsciously, you know, yeah, like that. that's definitely what he's saying, right? He's definitely saying subconsciously. The heart of the Yashar rejoices and senses that his actions are desirable, favorable. The This is the interpreter among them that reveals their innermost. Uh, hidden thoughts. Kia Asham Yamlitz Bin Haivilim. The Asham, I, I've lost his uh, the track here. The Asham will uh will interpret or inter uh, intercede between the Avilim, Viodia Cesar Lavavam, and will make known the hidden things in his heart. Shemargish Shehem Chayavim Onesh. Uh that he senses uh that he's Chayav Onesh. In Osim Maasem Basimcha, Kilibam Loyanuach. They don't do their actions with joy because their hearts know the, the because their, their their hearts are not at rest. This is like what some of you guys were saying. This is like people who were saying that that the Ivil has guilt for his actions. You know, again, I'm not convinced of that, but like that he has guilt and that guilt. I don't know what he's saying about it. That it reveals, uh, it reveals his thoughts. Yeah, I don't really know. Yeah, yeah. As well. I guess also with the korban asham, that translation that like if they're going to bring a korban asham that it goes show that they actually agree that what they did. Right. Was yeah. Korban. He seems to be saying. I mean, I, I, I don't think you're saying this, but he seems to be saying that this is like not the korban, right? That this is the, the asham. No, I know, but I'm yeah. saying that that too. You can say like the rest of it. Yeah. Where, like they they feel guilty. About right. It. It's coming out of guilt. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what he's saying. Um. Uh, but it is uh, thematically related to the approach you wanted to take, which is that this is how they deal internally 
with the fact that they're deviating from from the Torah, you know, from from principles of Chokmah. Okay, sorry, even for the Malvin. I right, will officially end here, but I'll, I'll hear what you're going to say. Is yeah. it just limited to his guilt? Is it just limited to what he thinks he's going to be punished for, or is it like, and is it, that a high level? Or seems to be what he's saying. Seems to be what the Malvin is saying that he senses he's high of onish on this, and I, I I do think that the Malvin is going to say we're talking about Jewish Yeah, like it doesn't mean necessarily like. Right, I think so. In terms of God, okay. yeah. Because there, I guess you're high of for anything. That's, there's nothing that you could ever do that's wrong and not be high of in some Right, sense. right. But I guess that would cover all things. My like, yeah. concern was that maybe this isn't covering. <coughs> oh, I'm not going to feel bad about something. I'm not going to get punished for it. Right. Yeah. <coughs> this seems no to be. Thing as that, in this case. Yeah. Right. Right. <coughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So I, I think we got a good idea in terms of, uh, <coughs> of our approach from yesterday. I think the redoc. There's a lot of good stuff to think about. Um, I, I just we need to sharpen that point about the it's this is talking about the late sanus of the evil, and it's stem. I think Rabbi Moskowitz is right that it's coming from the fact that he does look at the world in a superficial way, which blocks him from seeing internally, and 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 there is a sense that he has faults, but he'll just focus on others uh, for that for that reason. Yeah. All right. Sorry, Kion. All right. Interesting, Plaza. Uh,